What is up, everybody in the digital asset space, everybody in the XRP community as a whole? It is Thursday. Solomon here. If you see any scam ads on this video, as always, do not participate in that. Tons of news coming out today. European Union and crypto asset regulation. Ripple putting out a think piece on the need for interoperability. And that's what we're going to get started with here. But then there's also some interesting news about the Digital Chamber of Commerce and an individual who just joined there. And that kind of ties in with uh, SEC uh, Chairman Jay Clayton and his public cal uh, calendar and, you know, the meeting with Ripple, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, as always, it's just speculative, but it's very interesting how these dates seem to align. So I want to get started with this. Over 70% of the central banks, and this is from Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple, over 70% of the central banks around the world are looking at deploying central bank digital currencies. And one thing that's crystal clear is the importance of interoperability. And we talk about that all the time on this channel. If you're not prioritizing this, you're just rebuilding the same siloed system. Now, Ripple put out a post uh, right around the same time. Central bank digital currencies are a question of when not if and it is coming everybody and it's coming very very fast once one country does it i believe what is it the bahamas it said that they were going to release theirs in october it is going to be a complete domino effect uh you just watch uh cbdc's which is central bank digital currencies are a question of when not if the key to success is functionality that enables each system to operate seamlessly with other payment systems now this is from the press release that ripple put out today and if you're not aware, uh, there are multiple central banks out there, more than we've even heard announced, I'm sure, that have trialed and utilized Interledger Protocol, which was invented by Ripple and gifted to the W3C. W3C pretty much runs the internet at this point. Um, but the Interledger Protocol, if you are also not aware for some information for you all, is basically a value agnostic protocol that uh, creates interoperability and breaks down silos between um, almost any type of ledger. So banks have ledgers, obviously, but other institutions have ledgers as well. Uh, so value agnostic, what that means is it doesn't care if it's uh, fiat or cash based currency that's being transferred, it doesn't care if it's cryptocurrency, it doesn't care if it's something like a commodity or precious, precious metals, it does not matter. Uh, that is basically what the interledger protocol uh, does it creates uh, it breaks down silos and creates interoperability between existing ledgers. Um, and it's value agnostic. So this is the uh, this is the press release today from Ripple Insight from um, from Ripple. Interoperability will determine CBDC or central bank digital currency winners and losers. Now, this I very much so recommend going to read this because you'll about, you're about to see some more information about who Ripple has been tied in with um, dealing with uh, these central banks and uh, everything else. So now I'm not going to read this entire thing, but it is interesting. And I'll just go to the last paragraph here. Uh, if you're a bank or a financial institution interested in learning more about central bank digital currencies, we encourage you to re request your invitation to Ripple Swell Global 2020, October 14th and 15th, and virtually join the central bank panel discussion. Now, this swell, I believe, is invite only. Lots of Ripple clients, lots of banks there, lots of central banks there. So, you know, they're welcoming the advent of CBDCs as another driver in the adoption and development of digital currencies and payment systems that will benefit billions of people around the world. However, it is critical that each new central bank digital currency is designed with interoperability in mind, using the kind of open standards and protocols that have been so successful in the globalization of information via the Internet. My feeling very much so on central bank digital currencies is that they're going to be still based off the, uh, the original <clears throat> or the legacy monetary system. We know the issues that we have with uh, with unlimited printing of currency uh, and the debasement from value that fiat generally undertakes. Uh, look at what happened when the U.S. dollar detached from gold. Uh, do you think it costs four dollars to co to buy a loaf of bread, or or do you think that the the value of the dollar has went down and uh, you know your purchasing power is not as strong as it once was? So, from a technology standpoint, I believe that CBDCs very very much so are going to help. Um, from a speed from a speed standpoint, for sure, they're probably going to remove a lot of uh, unnecessary back office jobs. Well, I don't want to say unnecessary because people that have those jobs are going to be affected, but that's just the way that digitization is going to go. Um, but you know, also it, they they don't solve the inherent problem, and I also don't believe that you're going to have one CBDC or central bank digital currency to rule them all that is interoperable 
uh, between all uh, nations just because of all the red tape now. I mean, if that was the case, uh, you wouldn't have to, uh, you, you wouldn't have Forex rates and all this stuff right now between different nations. So uh, I believe very much so that something like XRP is going to be needed to bridge those central bank digital currencies. Okay, now this is from Bank XRP. This dude took a break. If you're not on Twitter, he is an absolute monster, uh, old school researcher, um, very respectable uh, p post, you know, factual based content. So if you are on Twitter, give Bank a follow. I know he's been on a little bit of a break for a while. Uh, I'm not going to play this video because the it's it's a little bit quiet. But this is just scope. And this is all the way back in 2018. Uh, Cigar Sarpai uh, of Ripple basically saying that Ripple is working with 40 to 50 central banks across the globe. And I believe Kevin Cage put out a video maybe three or four days ago, or maybe closer to a week ago. I think that numbers uh, went a little bit higher now. I want to say it's closer to 60 or 70. Correct me if I'm, I'm wrong. I could be completely wrong on that. But you would, you would assume that it's higher. If in 2018 it was 40 to 50, you would assume by 2020 it's higher than that number. Now, one example of Ripple working with um, these central banking institutions uh, is the uh, ECB, the European Central Bank, and Bank of Japan. Uh, this is Project Stella, okay? And Project Stella is a joint research project of the European Central Bank and Bank of Japan. Now, I'm not even going to present Bank of England, but we know Bank of England is directly tied in with Interledger, um, which we talked about earlier, and RippleNet. Uh, but they do talk a lot about it in Project Stella between Bank of Japan and the ECB. Uh, interoperability, okay? Cross-border payments. Uh, what is Ripple's uh, proposed use case right now? It's cross-border payments, and we hope that XRP is utilized in cross-border settlement. Interoperability all through Project Stella here. And Phase 3 uh, deals particularly with... Uh, Interledger protocol. And you can see selected private uh, sector initiatives. This is through the W3C. And it's even in the table of contents up here, I believe. Uh, experiments with distributed ledger technology ledgers. Uh, that's kind of a redundant thing to say, right? It should just be ex experiment with, uh, experiments with distributed ledger technology. Um, okay, experiments with ILP and experiments uh, without ILP here. Now, we go down into this, and uh, this experiment that they did with centralized ledgers, which I would imagine would have to do with uh, connecting the banking institutions, they conducted experiments to confirm synchronized settlement settlement between centralized ledgers using Interledger protocol. Five Bells Ledger was adopted as a centralized ledger, and uh, Interledger protocol plugin Bells was used as a plugin for client applications of participants to connect to Five Bells Ledger. Five Bells Ledger. Uh, was developed specifically to provide the minimum functionality required for full interledger support. All right, huge news today also, and I'm going to switch topics here, okay? Uh, this is directly related to XRP. Uh, Ripple announced today, well, actually, actually, I shouldn't say Ripple. <laughs> XRP Ledger Foundation has been officially launched, uh, and this was just today. Uh, now, this update was shared via the official Twitter handle of the newly launched foundation. According to the update, the foundation will be independent and nonprofit. Uh, now, the following message was shared. Uh, today, we launched the XRP Foundation, an independent nonprofit focusing on the growth, innovation, and development of the XRP ledger and XRP community. With support of industry leaders, academics, and community members, we can ensure XRPL is well positioned for the future. Uh, so if you're on Twitter, XRPLF, it's at XRPLF, uh, XRP Ledger Foundation. Uh, now here's the official release here. Now some of the key areas of initial activity of this vision, uh, you know, core technology behind the XRP Ledger. They're going to uh, uh, enhance and develop infrastructure, including high capacity hubs, full history servers and monitoring systems, a unique uh, node list, establish a list of public and objective criteria. You get this, okay? Uh, this is very much so geared towards, uh, I believe, developers as well here. So if you want to read this release, feel free. The actual website is xrplf.org. Uh, um, so check that out whenever you get a chance. Multiple initiatives uh, going on, uh, being developed on XRP. Uh, and I'm sure Ripple had a hand in this to some extent, but um, it is nice to see the ecosystem growing. Okay, now the European Union announces its first ever plan to regulate cryptocurrencies. Uh, this is the actual press release here, okay? Now, if you go down into here, they talk about this being in legislation tied up for maybe potentially a year or longer. Uh, but who knows? Who knows what's going to happen here? But there are implications um, that are going to be specifically geared towards stable coins that they're going to have to comply with. So. 
Um, there's there's some negative connotations that deal with Libra, uh, Facebook's project there. But okay, I did want to read this. This is the official release: legislative proposals on crypto assets, seizing opportunities, and mitigating risks. The commission today has proposed for the first time. I'm not restarting. The commission has today proposed for the first time new legislation on crypto assets, a digital representation of values or rights that can be stored and traded electronically. The regulation on markets and crypto assets will boost innovation while preserving financial stability and protecting investors from risks, providing legal clarity and certainty for crypto asset issuers and providers. Now, this is very interesting to me, okay? This next sentence here, because we know that last week Kraken basically got de uh, declared a, a, a banking institution in the United States. I think that was in Wyoming, right? And that release basically had stated, or was that through the OCC, the passport? That might have been the passport thing. I think that was the OCC. Uh, essentially like this passport that you would need to comply with. Um, and it, basically, if a crypto um, if a crypto company that deals in transactions or payment transactions or a crypto exchange or whatever is licensed in one state, there's pretty much a passport that they're proposing that's going to allow them to uh, be licensed uh, in, in pretty much every state in the US. Now, this is very similar to that. So it's interesting to see the rhetoric coming out of the EU here. Pay attention to this. The new rules will allow operators authorized in one EU member state to provide their services across the EU, uh, you know, quote unquote, passporting. That's the same exact thing that we just saw, uh, you know, like a week ago, right? For, I think it was from the OCC, correct me if I'm wrong, but I know that I've seen this passporting thing and I know that it, I believe it was in the US, um, right, you know, being registered in one state, you're basically... Uh, registered and regulated in all states then. Uh, safeguards include capital requirements, custody of assets. Custody of assets is huge. A mandatory complaint holder procedure, uh, procedure available to investors and rights of the investor against the issuer. Issuers of sign significant asset-backed crypto assets or so-called stable coins would be subject to more stringent requirements. Now, this is interesting too. The European Commission uh, or the EU is also proposing today a pilot regime for market infrastructures that wish to try to trade and settle transactions in financial instruments in crypto asset form. I talk about this all the time. They're regulating digital assets, the tokenization of everything, every legacy asset that you could possibly think of that are still moving today uh commodities everything is going to be tokenized real estate is going to be tokenized um and it's it's all about liquidity and it's all about speed it's all about removing friction so this sandbox or this pilot regime trade and settle transactions and financial instruments in crypto asset form from the european union they're telling you what's coming the pilot regime also uh represents a so-called sandbox approach we're seeing this all over the place, or a controlled environment, uh, allowing temporary derogations from existing rules. So they're they are not going to going to make these uh, firms comply with existing rules uh, because regulators need to gain experience on the use of distributed ledger technology and market infrastructures. They are going to change laws, essentially, in my humble opinion, uh, laws that are going to um, <clears throat> prevent the utilization of utility uh, via digital assets. Uh, tokenization uh, initiatives, et cetera, are going to be modified. Uh, it's just a matter of time. So now they're literally telling you that they're, go they're going to bypass laws in the sandbox environment so the regulators can gain experience on the use of distributed ledger technology and in market infrastructures. Okay, so I think that I've read enough of that. Now, this is very interesting, okay? And there's a lot in here. It's a little bit of a deeper dive, but blockchain trade uh, group names Mick uh, Mulvaney to the board. Uh, now, this is the Digital Chamber of Commerce. Chamber of Digital Commerce, a blockchain trade association, names Mick Mulvaney, President Trump's former acting chief of staff, to its board of advisors on Wednesday. Where do you think this is going, everybody? Mulvaney founded the Congressional Blockchain Caucus when he was in the Congress from uh, 2011 to 2017. Uh, also a director, previous director at the Office of Management and Budget and acting director of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. CFPB should ring a bell. All right. Now, uh, I'm going to go down here a little bit more. Okay. So, acting director of the CFPB. We're going to get into that in a second. First, I wanted to go over Chamber of Digital Commerce. If you're not aware of their executive committee, extremely heavy hitters on here from the blockchain standpoint. 
Accenture, we know Accenture is a RippleNet integrator, right? Binance US, we know the head of Binance US just left Ripple. Uh, BitPay, Bittrex, BNP Paribas, uh, BNY Mellon, I mean, some big banking institutions in here. Digital Asset Group, Deloitte, DTCC handles all the derivatives uh, trading pretty much uh, in the world, from my understanding, and that's you know up to $1.2 quadrillion. Hedera Hashgraph, interesting that they're on there. Goldman Sachs, we saw Goldman Sachs news yesterday. IOTA, I pay attention to IOTA, not financial advice. Polymath, Ripple just so happens to be on there. So uh, multiple other members, but that just so happens to be the executive committee, okay? Now this Mike Mulvaney, we just saw, saw that he's the director of the CFPB, right? <clears throat> January 17th, 2018, regulatory developments. Mulvaney seeks information to improve CFPB processes. Now, let's talk a little bit about this. What did we just see about four months ago now? See, uh, Consumer Protection Agency recognizes XRP's potential in remittance. CFPB. The U.S. Consumer Financial Protection Bureau has recognized the role of Ripple and XRP in cross-border transfers. A recent rule on remittance transfers shows. This is that rule, remittance transfers under the Electronic Fund Transfer Act. Uh, essentially, this is for institutions that fall within a threshold. They need to uh, provide pre, um, uh, basically uh, pre, I don't want to call it estimated, but amounts uh, of, of fees basically during these funds transfers. Now, this is a CFPB. We saw Mick Mulvaney basically asking for uh, comments for improvements um, in payments. And this CFPB, he's the director, uh, mentions directly Ripple in here, okay? Uh, now, this is to the continued growth of fintech non-bank remittance transfer providers. They do talk about Swift's GPI in here as well. So they're trying to continue growth uh, and expand. This is, they're, they're monitoring the remittance transfer market, okay, since this assessment report. Uh, and the most developments that uh, continue to uh, progress, okay, the continued growth and expanding partnerships of virtual cu uh, currency companies such as Ripple, which offer both a payments messaging platform to support cross-border money transfers, as well as a virtual currency, XRP, which can be used to affect settlement of those transfers. Interestingly enough, this is uh, SEC chairman. Many of you have seen this. Jay Clayton's public calendar, August 1st, 2018 to August 31st, 2018. Uh, on Thursday, August 16th, he met with Mick Mulvaney, Director, Office of Management and Budget. Uh, directly after, had a conversation with President Donald Trump. Uh, Friday was a meeting with staff. And then we can see here, I'm not directly trying to correlate this stuff, people, but I do know from a business standpoint, um, you know, generally later on in the week, Thursday, Friday timeframe, you do have internal meetings based on what's going to occur the very beginning of the next week. So uh, I'm just trying to connect dots here. Uh, the dots may not connect whatsoever, but I'm providing all of the scope that I can possibly provide based on the information that I've found. So this is that Mick Mulvaney. Well, we now know that he sits on the board of the Digital Chamber of Commerce. Uh, then, you know, uh, Jay Clayton talks with Trump. Monday, uh, there is a meeting with Ripple at 11 a.m., uh, including Brad Garlinghouse, CEO David Schwartz, Chief Technology Officer, and John Roscoe, Special Assistant to the President, White House Office of Presidential Personnel. So we have Jay Clayton, the head of the SEC, meeting with only Ripple and only the Special Assistant to the President. Many of you have seen that, right? Now, interestingly enough, John Roscoe was named uh, Chief of Staff of the Federal Housing Finance Agency, January 31st, 2019. So about, what, four months later, right? Now, I'm more curious about what his role was during that meeting with Ripple, though, okay? Special assistant to the, to the president um, noted that his work has helped. This is, this is the announcement of him being brought into the FHFA. So that his previous work has helped shape the economic trade and regulatory arm of the Trump administration prior to joining the White House, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Now, this is another title here that I've seen of John Roscoe, uh, January 20th, 2017. So I'm, I'm assuming that he still held this role up until the uh, FHFA. And this role was Deputy Director of the Office of Public Engagement and Intergovernmental Affairs. You can see right here, John Roscoe. Now this is that, uh, this is that office here, Intergovernmental Affairs and Public Engagement. 
The Office of Intergovernmental Affairs and Public Engagement leads the Office of the United States Trade Representative's public outreach efforts to state and local governments, small and large business and agricultural communities, and labor, environmental, and consumer groups. This group is at the forefront of the administration's efforts to create jobs in the United States by doing trade in a new way. Now, interestingly enough as well, uh, the IAPE, which is the acronym for uh, uh, Intergovernmental Affairs and Public Engagement, oversees the U.S. Trade Advisory Committee system. The U.S. Trade Advisory Committees are an integral part of the trade negotiating process, providing advice and guidance in the construction of trade relations with nations around the world. Why would this individual um, be meeting with Ripple and um, Jay Clayton, head of the SEC? Now, these are all the advisory committees that fall under the IAPE. And I've got much more deep diving to do on this because it's interesting and there may be something here, there may not. But I guarantee you there's something here with blockchain. They may just not call out Ripple or whatever whenever you actually do the deep diving. Um, Now, these are the advisory committees. Uh, Trade Policy and Negotiations, Agricultural Policy Advisory Committee, Agricultural Technical Advisory Committees for Trade, Industry Trade Advisory Committees, Intergovernmental Policy Advisory Committee, Labor Advisory Committee, Trade Advisory Committee on Africa, Trade and Environment Policy Advisory Committee. Guarantee you find some stuff in here about blockchain, digitization, digital assets, or something. I just have not had the time to look. Interesting to see how all this stuff is tying together. Uh, regulations out of the EU is huge. We talk about interoperability all the time, okay? And it's just the same, same old, same old. I mean, nothing new. Um, but we are obviously, uh, we are in this marathon and it's, you know, one step, one stride at a time. And it's interesting to see how this is all playing out because it's happening quicker and quicker now. So I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. Uh, again, I'm still working on starting to do the deep dives into uh, the top 100 of the, of the digital assets. I think I might start at 100 and work my way back because most people know the top 10, top 20. Um, maybe you'll see something about that come across this weekend for the first one. If there's news tomorrow, I will present it. Thank you all for the continued support. Um, I really, really, really appreciate it. Um, love you all. So uh, have a good evening. Later.